time travel exists, you just don't know it yet. Okay, so tonight, well, it's almost tomorrow, but right now it's February 28th, and I was able to watch a, a an advanced screening of The Atom Project, which is an upcoming Netflix movie starring Ryan Reynolds, Mark Ruffalo, Jennifer Garner, Zoe Saldana, and I cannot remember the name of the kid who plays in here. Well, I, don't, I actually don't even know his name. I have no idea who he is. I don't think I've seen him before. If I have, I forgot. And it's an interesting... Um, well, right off the bat, it's it's a concept that I already like. It's, it's, a, it's a theme that I already enjoy. Time travel. I love time travel stuff. I love the whole idea of it. And it makes my brain explode, but I still think it's so cool. One of the reasons that Terminator... Terminator 2 is my favorite movie of all time. Just the whole idea of the time loop and the, or maybe not even necessarily a loop, but just like trying to change your future, trying to fix the past to change the future. And the, sort of, you know, the, the deeper elements that run along with that sort of thing, redemption, trying to uh, make things better, stuff like that. So this movie, the, the premise of the film is, and I just found out about it not long ago because I got this notification about advanced screening for this. And I was like, I didn't even know what this, I had never heard of it before. But then when I saw it said time travel, it was like, okay, I'm in. And so the premise is Ryan Reynolds, his character is from the future and he jumps back in time because he has to, he's trying to fix things because stuff that happened in the past, you know, think Terminator, right? Stuff that happened in the past has affected the future and made things worse. There's, there's all these specific reasons for why he's doing what he's doing. And of course, time travel, the whole time travel concept being what it is, you know, it, it's mind exploding. And I'm sure there's all sorts of inconsistencies in the storyline because some things is like, well, that just, how in the world? But, you know. It's a fiction story, so whatever. They can make up their own rules for how this sort of thing works. So the director of this movie is Sean Levy. I've got my little notes here. I took notes. He directed, actually he's directed quite a few things that I've enjoyed. Night of, Night of the Museum, Free Guy, Date Night, and some episodes of Stranger Things. So that was a good sign that I was going to enjoy this film and I did I thought it was actually very good it was quite enjoyable it's a despite the violence yes there's a lot of violence this is a decent family friendly <laughs> I do family friendly because you know there's fighting there's some killing it's not anything that's really graphic or or, or, or you know gets into r-rated territory but there is certainly stuff like that happening but at the core of it it's it, it's a sweet, touching little story about the importance of fathers, how people deal with loss, and the pain that can happen as a result of that, pain that can turn into anger, that can disrupt your way. And trying to come to terms with that. And yeah, I'm trying not to give too many. I'm going to try to make this spoiler free, y'all. But in a lot of ways, I felt like Ryan Reynolds meeting the character of or the his younger self. It's kind of like in some ways he was almost like a father figure to him or like an older brother ish to him because he the interaction between them is hilarious. I'll get that right off the bat. The dialogue, it's your typical Ryan Reynolds. You know, it's Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds. Not quite as much Ryan Reynolds as he was in uh, Red Notice. That was the name of the movie? The one with um, The Rock and Gal, Gal Gadot? Anyway, not as Ryan Reynolds-y as that. 
there is this humor, but he's got this dramatic sort of sadness and undertone to his performance and keeps it a bit, you know, a bit grounded in serious stuff. But there is quite a bit of humor in here. So, you know, set yourself up for that. Know that that's what you're walking into. I mean, I think that probably most people who are familiar with, with him and the work that he does, you know that that's kind of going to be part of. I don't think I have ever seen him, unless I'm just drawing a complete blank, I don't think I've ever seen Ryan Reynolds in a purely dramatic role. He's almost being typecast as mostly a comedic, but at the same time, he's he's uh, slid himself also into action, action territory, and he is quite a good dramatic actor. He he really, I mean, in some ways, he reminds me of Jim Carrey. He's reminded me of Jim Carrey for a long time. I think it was when I saw him in Just Friends. That might have been the first thing that I paid attention to him as an actor. And his performance reminded me a lot of Jim Carrey. And similar to Jim Carrey, he's a very good dramatic actor. I mean, he really, the performance that he, uh, the performances that he, that he does in this movie on the dramatic side, they really tugged at the heartstrings. I don't know, y'all. Sometimes I can be really sensitive about stuff like sometimes things just grab me i mean these touching moments between him and his mother and his younger self and other people that really do um just i don't know they they hit an emotional chord with me and i really appreciated those uh that being woven in so the kid who played ryan reynolds he is a smart ass, just like Ryan Reynolds is, and they play well off each other. Sometimes I felt like the kid's performance, um, sometimes it did have that scripted sort of feel, not necessarily as, as purely natural as maybe it could have been in some ways, but at the same time, I thought he did a really decent job. He, he's kind of youngish, you know, but he, I thought he favored Ryan Reynolds in a lot of ways too, in his face and in his, uh, his facial expressions and his little snarky mouth and sense of humor. Um, so I thought that he did a really good job. Actually, everybody in here for the most part did a really solid job with the exception of maybe two people. One of them more so than, than the other, and I'll get to that after a bit. I'm kind of trying to go through my little checklist here. Um, some of the scenes of Ryan Reynolds and his younger self fighting with, other, with each other was really, really funny. I had several laugh out loud moments, and I, I think that this is probably going to be something that a lot of people can enjoy for the humor and the action and the sci-fi element. There, there's just It's just like this nice little mixture of touching, sweet moments, life lesson sort of thing. In a lot of ways, this is kind of a coming of age story of the younger version of Adam as he finds out about himself from the future and kind of, you know, is trying to navigate this strange world that he's in with, with the adventures he's going on with his future self. And that is explained as far as why he does go with the older Adam to certain places and do certain things that is something that I felt was was written pretty well uh, like I said I'm not going to get into specifics you'll know what I'm talking about when you get to it there are of course some of your you know your typical time travel um, tropes or uh, things that are mentioned and uh, addressed in the in in the movie and some of them that are broken they kind of go a different way than what we're typically told is supposed to happen in time travel stories but that's okay the whole thing is fiction anyway so it doesn't matter you can come up with your own rules <laughs> when it comes to the stuff like that it was interesting to see jennifer garner and mark ruffalo together again on screen they played in 13 going on 30 many many years back he was uh, her love interest and in this 
movie they play husband and wife and so that was kind of they have a really good chemistry together they 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 play well off each other very natural interactions that they have with regard to mark ruffalo's character i felt like his in some ways when he came in onto the scene the story at that point started to feel in some parts kind of rushed and so i don't know if there were things that had been edited out or that's just the way they wrote the story in some ways he was he was really good in some of his scenes and then in other ways it felt like because of the situation and because of kind of how uh sped up sp things started to get after he came into the picture it felt like that his acting wasn't the 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 best uh and mark Ruffalo, he he's a you know he's an he's a fine actor he he's pretty solid so i just picked up on that and i'm not sure how much of that was because of his performance or it was just because of the situation like i said that this stuff was was going along quickly and it felt like maybe it needed just a skosh more time to breathe out but at the same time it's not like this movie was a short movie it really wasn't it was Runtime is about an hour and 44 minutes, but part of me just felt like it needed a tiny bit more breathing room at certain points towards the end. But it's not really a huge complaint because overall the, the, the story is really enjoyable. I liked the action scenes, the special effects were kind of cool, the way they did the, 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 the jet or the, the, plane or whatever it was he was he was traveling in when he when he jumped through time and everything and the futuristic stuff was kind of cool i felt like this would have been something that i would have enjoyed to watch on the big screen and interestingly enough in my area they did have it on the big screen like for well maybe it's going to be tomorrow i can't remember it might be tomorrow they're having i didn't get to it in time but they were having like you could do a free screening you could grab some tickets, do a free screening, and by the time I saw the email and went to it, all the seats were taken. So I would have preferred to have watched it on the big screen, but it was okay. You know, I saw it on the small screen. It's going to be available to everybody else through Netflix on November. November, holy crap. My brain's not in sync with the time. It's going to be released on November 11th, I believe. Yeah, it's. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing some time travel of my own in my brain. It's coming to Netflix on March 11th. <laughs> Holy crap. I will eventually get this right. Yeah. So like, I think next Friday, Ninth, the ninth is on when, yeah, next Friday. I, I think it's going to be pretty well received by the Netflix audience. Honestly, I felt like this was a better quality movie than Red Notice. I did go see Red Notice on the big screen. That was also another Netflix thing. It was dumb fun. I enjoyed it, but I felt like this had much more substance, despite some moments in here where you really have to suspend your disbelief. There, uh, you know, obviously, I felt like this overall was just a, a more solid experience, more solid storytelling, much more emotionally grounded, much more impactful as far as, you know, how, uh, how it affects you as an audience member. I mean, there were some moments, yeah, like I said, where I was, I was getting really, you know, I just tugged on the heartstrings in a lot of ways. And uh, I, I think it, it's something that will, probably touch quite a few people you know some people might not feel as affected by it as me I don't know if it's just me but I felt like some of the the themes that are woven throughout this story are touching enough that many people will be able to identify with them and sympathize empathize with what the characters are going through and uh, yeah so I don't know, just, I, I thought this was just a nice little, cool little time travel action story. 
wrapped up in a nice, sweet little, I don't know, family-oriented sort of narrative. You know, like I said, uh, importance of fathers and how it can really affect a child when when they lose a parent at a young age and the difficulty of that. In the case of this story, it was his father, but also the importance of uh, mothers and being able to figure out how to make your way through the loss with the parent that's left behind. It, you'll see what you'll see what I mean when you when you get around to it. Um, getting to I've already touched on moments in here where it really has to where you really have to suspend your disbelief, but there are also some other things in here that I noticed that were kind of more on the negative side or I guess more in con territory. Well, I've already mentioned some the suspension of disbelief in some of the scenes, obviously. There's like a car chase that happens in the middle of the forest and there's no way in the world that the vehicle involved would not have ended up crashing into all the trees. There wasn't even a road there that, that was there. And yet the person driving the vehicle was able to just miraculously avoid crashing and, and being able to reverse and doing wild turns, that sort of stuff. Another thing, there was a scene where a character, speaking vaguely, where a character was off removed from the action, doing something to influence the action. <laughs> and yet that person, knowing the situation, knowing that there were these bad guys looking for them, they were just wide out in the open. Even though they were removed from what was going on over here, they were still very visible and I felt like that was kind of silly because they should have taken better precautions because, because of course the person's discovered and the events move on from there. I realized that was the, that was the, the, the plot point that had to make other stuff happen. But at the same time, given the situation, why would you expose yourself like that? Stuff like that. And also the, character who played the bad guy it was actually a woman i've seen her before in different places but I, I i can't remember now where i've seen her her character she felt almost like cartoony or almost like a bond villainy type uh except not almost like a caricature of your typical big bad that you and you don't really fully understand their motives or you can't really connect with them on any sort of emotional level like why was this person doing the things they were doing when they knew that it was going to cause bad things to happen what was the benefit to them when there was so much messed up based on i mean it just it made no sense to me and then as things progressed she started to just become more and more almost over the top ridiculous with the way she was acting and it was kind of hard for me to take her seriously because of things like that. I felt like she was just a, a weakly written bad guy and to me that was one of the weaker points in in this movie. I did appreciate that there were certainly some things that happened that I wasn't expecting, but at the same time, a lot of what did happen in here was uh, pretty typical, something that you could probably easily predict. So those sorts of things, you know, like a, a bad guy, a protagonist that's not, uh, or an antagonist that's not very well written, not very substantial, uh, also uh, predictable sorts of things that happen. But as a whole, those sorts of issues really weren't enough to detract from my enjoyment of this movie because it was just, there was just something about the, the chemistry between the characters, the dialogue, the way it was written, 
and the emotion, the heartfelt emotion that came through in the performances and how also it just plucked at my heartstrings like a little, I was going to say violin, but you don't really pluck violin strings, but you know what I'm talking about. And this is something that I could see myself rewatching. I wouldn't mind rewatching re this. Some other things that I appreciated about this film, though, was th the different moments between Ryan Reynolds, his older self and his younger self, and how you could see that, well, so Ryan Reynolds, he, he's kind of bitter because of things that's happened in his life and the losses that he has endured. And he's talking with his younger self. And it was interesting to see almost in some ways the, the roles would be reversed where his younger self almost took on a sort of like a teaching role and sort of helped him to see things a little bit differently because he had been, he had developed selective memory about some things from his past and he had grown bitter because of these, th this narrative that he had concocted in his head about the way things had been when he was younger and his younger self, because he's living in that moment, he was telling him, no, that's that's not really how it was. So I, I, I thought that that was kind of interesting that they showed how there are times where we can convince ourselves about the way something was. And maybe that really wasn't exactly the way it was. We were just being very picky about the things that we chose to remember or picky about the things we chose to focus on and obsess over. I thought that was kind of an interesting little touch. I noticed that. But Anyway, yeah, as a whole, I felt like this was a really fun film, and I think that, that audiences are going to enjoy it. If you're a fan of, of um, Ryan Reynolds, you're, you're probably going to enjoy it. This is nothing really uh, new or extremely different for him, but it's still something that's fun to watch. I think, uh, I think a lot of people are probably going to enjoy it. Just, just a fun film. Would have preferred to watch it on the big screen but oh well i've already griped about that so i'm not going to anymore and i have just vomited up a whole bunch of nonsense with no real clear and concise narrative in my talking here so i'm going to go ahead and wrap it up it is getting late i am tired i don't know why i felt like it was going to be a good idea to do this so late but i wasn't able to watch the movie until just a couple hours ago, so. Oh well. Okay, I guess that's it for now. <laughs> it's been a while since I've recorded, so I'm feeling a little rusty. Maybe that's what it is. All right, you guys. Bye.